Welcome to Hanging with Hyde. I'm Heidi Jo Lopez. And uh, once again, you have the background of part of our house. And um, I know that uh, for those of you who've been following me, I wanna ask forgiveness again there for not posting as much. In the last few weeks, I have been having a whole lot of um, technical difficulties. And, <laughs> and I've had to push through and fight through. And that's part of actually what I'm gonna talk to you today about is, um, <sighs> Probably since my salvation, I have known that I was called out, called out to God, called out as, as his own, called out to a destiny to complete and do whatever it is that he has asked of me. And in so doing, um, I've come up against a whole lot of uh, the enemy of my soul, Satan, who has tried to derail me at every possible turn and... Um, and render me useless. And in so doing, uh, because of my ignorance, uh, just like in scripture when it says, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge, uh, I would love to have that actual scripture reference for you, but look it up on you version, you'll find it. My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. And um, destroyed from lack of knowledge, I think that's a New King James Version. So anyway, because um, the enemy of our soul, his whole goal is to keep us completely um, oblivious to his tactics and his cunning. And in so doing, he uh, tricks us or deceives us into sinning or opening doors up to him, which will definitely lead to sin and deception. And um, oftentimes we are completely unaware of it. And actually uh, most of the time, if not all the time, we are completely unaware of it. There are those that truly do uh, seek the enemy as their Lord and serve him and knowingly and wittingly follow him into those places. But as Christians, those of us who fall into these things, we are unwittingly um, brought in most of the time. Now, yes, we know what regular sin is. We accidentally, we absolutely understand these sins if we read scripture, if we go to church. But if we come to Christ and we don't do any of these things and we don't um, strive to understand, you know, to hear the voice of God, know the voice of God, um, then we, we can be easily duped by the enemy. Uh, so having shared that, um, I have basically started about, I don't know, probably 20 or 30 things. I hope I'm not exaggerating. Um, in my passion and purpose to honor the Lord in what he's called me to. Things I have completed. I have completed a whole lot of books, novels um, that he has called me to write. I have written them. I have met opposition with the enemy when it's trying to get them out to, to um, I, I came up against the spirit of fear when I would do book signings and, and ever anybody wanted to talk to me about my books, I would have this horrific feeling of embarrassment over it or that I was somehow lying that I wasn't this person when it was obvious I was a writer, I have completed, uh, I don't know, 12 books or something. Um, there's others there. It might be closer to 15, but I'm not positive. I, I think it's 12 um, <clears throat> in completion, uh, 10 of which are published. Um, so anyway, it's that's those are tricks of the enemy. He knows we're called to do things, right? So he, he brings shame on us or fear on us or doubt on us, and we start to doubt those things. And another thing he does is he has us um, compare ourselves with what the world thinks or society thinks or even what those within the church in good meaning think. Um, I came up against, well, if you're just a novelist, then how, how big of a help is that to the kingdom of God, even if you're writing about uh, Christian incidents, Christian characters, history uh, from a Christian perspective, you know, that's how, how great is that? I mean, it's not basically a Christian help book or a Christian book to, to really break down scriptures and what have you. And so I believed that lie for a time. Um, I believed the lie that because I hadn't been picked up by a huge publishing house, that therefore I wasn't a real writer because I hadn't been validated by somebody, um, say the New York Times would, would believe 
is one to validate. So I believed that lie for a time. Um, and then I got angry for a time and I, I, you know, um, came against all of that stuff in a non-healthy way. And it, it stopped me too, because I was angry and I was frustrated. And so again, that was another roadblock. And then I came up against the roadblock of, well, these are, these are closed doors. So it must be the Lord closing the doors for me. I guess I'll just sit here. Yet I would constantly hear Holy Spirit say to me that we're supposed to use our gifts. Anything he gives us, we're supposed to use them. And I kept questioning the Lord. Why would you make me so talented? Why would you just literally pour so many gifts upon me, which I know are not mine. They're not from me. They're literally yours. Why in the world would you give me these gifts not to use them? And, you know, and then I, I heard a prophet say that it shouldn't have been a shocker, but I was listening to a prophet uh just over a year ago, and he just, I, I wasn't even really listening to him. Tanya was at our house, and she was listening to him, and I was just walking through the room, and I heard him, uh, a woman had shared a dream she'd had uh, with him, and he started to describe that dream, and he said to her, he said, because she, she had a, a dream of, a, of like a python surrounding her and choking out what she knew it was, a ministry or her calling or her purpose that God had given to her. And he said, well, all this time that you have believed God has been putting up gates to stop you from going forward, it has been the enemy who has kept you, who has been squeezing you and blocking you. And I stopped and I think my mouth literally fell open and I looked at that the TV and I went, you've got to be kidding me. I was walking through it. That, that word was for me, you know? And so fast forward, lots of things. I can't even list them all. I have started project after project after project after project and didn't finish it. And not because I'm not a finisher, because I am by definition of myself a finisher. Matter of fact, forever all I could ever think about was the product from a little kid through college, through my adult life. You know, I always wanted to finish. And because I was so obsessed, yes, obsessed, I'm going to use that word, with the end product, um, the God of who loves me, <laughs> Jesus, he uh, slowed me down and he gave me this incredible saying. I actually, he's put it on my heart forever and uh, I think it's moved over here, but it says the journey is your destination. And he had been teaching me that lesson for so long and so well that when I saw that uh, in a Christian bookstore, this beautiful metal artwork that said, the journey is your destination, I, I knew I had to buy it and it had to be on my wall. It had to be a reminder to me that, that Heidi, it's not the end, it's the whole thing that's important. The whole entire thing is important. The whole journey is important. You know, I, I wanted to hurry up and get to the end product. Well, but we need the journey so that we can do the end product well or fantastic or amazing, right? So in the process of every time I would start out to honor God in, in the way he was calling me out with things, whether it was uh, to write a book, like one time I started um, a book and it's a beautiful idea. It's still a beautiful idea. It's still out there. I still may do it. It was called Testify Me. And it was about talking to people and interviewing people. And we may start it on Hanging with Hyde. You know what? That's a brilliant idea. And it was giving voice to everyday people to let them share amazing aspects of God in their life. Testify me. And basically it was testify about me, about me, Jesus. And who am I? right? It's a brilliant idea. It is absolutely a God-given idea. And I went forward and I was bold in it. And then somehow I got derailed because I didn't know how to bring it to fruition. How do I do this? It was, it was a great idea, but I didn't know how to bring it to the other side. So I'm going to declare and decree that this is still in me to, to deliver. This testify me is still something God's calling me to do, and I will complete it in his time. So there's that. There's been other things. Um, even the Hanging with Hyde show, I told you from the very beginning, I tried to start it, tried to start it, tried to start it, tried to start it in one way thinking that was a great way. Nope, 
try to start another way. And finally, God said to me last year, okay, I want you to start it. And I don't want you to care about um, if there, whether you look right, whether your hair is wadded up or, you know, you're not uh, looking the best you've ever looked or you don't have a studio or, the have, or a great mic or, or a great filming or whatever, right? Just start it, Heidi. Just start it. So here I am still on this journey and I'm still being faithful to it. Uh, and in the midst of being faithful, the enemy has uh, come in and tried to cause issue, cause issue with my mic, cause issue with, with uploading, cause issue with my internet. I mean, it's just been crazy. Uh, plus there's been a lot of other stuff swirling around and uh, around me. And, um, and so it's been a fight. And I am positive that the enemy of my soul, Satan, was just waiting for me to give up like he had always gotten me to do before. But this time, it's different. This time, God has ordained this, and I won't stop. And I know that this platform, that this show in particular, Hanging with Hyde and whatever comes off of it, is literally everything to do with Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, and God the Father. Everything. And I'm going to use it for him. It's about him. And I'm not going to stop. I may get shut, slowed down for a little bit, but I'm going to press in. And I'm saying it out loud because I'm decreeing and declaring it. And I'm setting it as bedrock. So having said that, here's the next part. Um, this last week, I began. I sat down to write an article for my blog. And it was compelling and passionate and I was very excited about it so much so that when my husband got up I shared it with him and um, he uh, he listened um, he's he's not as as uh, gung-ho and deep diving as I am at this time but he will be uh, so don't worry just pray for him he's a mighty man of God he is so so mighty in God, he just doesn't know it yet. And it's exciting. I know it's gonna unfold before long and he's gonna blow my mind when I see God erupt in him. And I am so excited about it. So, but he supports everything I do. He stands with me. He um, knows that I'm called to do what I'm called to do and he honors me in that. And so I was reading this article to him and in so doing, the teacher in me came flying out. I couldn't help myself and I start teaching what I wrote in the article and he's looking at me and he goes do you really believe that and I said yes with everything in me I believe it and all of a sudden it hit me really hard and I went I looked at him and I said this isn't an article this is a book God wants me to write this as a book and I thought and don't make the mis same mistake Heidi don't make the mistake that you've done before like you start it but you want to be so perfectionistic that you blah 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 and then you shut it down because you're too perfectionistic so I'm going to say this right now so you guys can, uh, just knowing I said it will hold me accountable, that I'm, I'm writing this book. It, it started to pour out of me. I wrote for like, I can't remember, it was five to seven hours straight, and it was just pouring out of me, scripture upon scripture upon scripture, connection upon connection. And I'm not saying that, that the writing is absolutely brilliant, but the concept and everything about it is totally Holy Spirit, and it is, it is absolutely beautiful and true. And it's called um, living, living in freedom. I think that's what it's called or living truly free. I think it's called living truly free. Yeah, there I am. Can't even remember the name of it. Living truly free. And basically it is an exposure of the tactics of the enemy of our soul. And so, yes, I want to put it in book form. And yes, I do believe that a laborer is worthy or wage and you should get paid for what you do. But I also know that this is a time where I just want the information out there. I don't want to stop anybody from learning about the lies of the enemy. So I'm going to start putting it out on my uh, website, um, HeidiJoLopez.com. And I will have it titled under there, um, Living Truly Free. Okay, so I will put a new tab on my, I haven't done it yet, but I will put a new tab on my website, uh, HeidiJoLopez.com, H-E-I-D-I-J-O-L-O-P-E-Z.com. 
And I encourage you, I strongly encourage you to get on there and um, read it as I'm posting parts of it. And don't just read it. Go and do the deep dive into scripture yourself. Look up all those scriptures I, I give and start asking Holy Spirit to lead you and your own fresh revelation. And just as um, in the teaching minutes when I do those and I read the Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me. And I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. And you guys, this is basically what God is doing in my life and all over the world. He is talking to people. He's revealing himself to people because they are calling to him. We are calling to him and we're willing to do the deep dive. We're willing to do the research. We're willing to get up in the middle of the night when he gives us one word and research it and go, what does that mean? Or he, or he puts a scripture in our heart and we start diving into it and digging it up and chewing on it. And and he meets us there. I am literally living a time of fresh revelation all the time. And I'm excited to see what God is going to do. And one thing that I realize very much, and as he begins to grow me in doing what I am doing, that I have to hold fast to the scriptures that are spoken over my life. One of which is uh, Philippians 4, 4 through 8. Uh, be anxious for nothing but in everything in prayer and supplication. Well, actually, it's rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to, evidence to all. Evident to all. You know, the Lord is near. And then it goes on to say, be anxious in nothing but in everything in prayer and supplication. And then it goes on to all the beautiful things there, which I'm not going to quote the whole thing. And then the other one is um, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles 18, 13. Oh boy, I'm going to have to check it out. Uh, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna pause this and probably splice it together because I'm gonna look it up right now. Okay, it's 2 Chronicles 18, 13. And this is literally the prophetic scripture that was uh, spoken over my life by my mom. And I know I've said it before, as the Lord lives, whatever my God says, that I will speak. That is my destiny scripture. So I am learning that because I have been given the call on my life to speak for God, I have to be very careful what I say, not just when I'm obviously speaking for him, but when I'm talking just even out, actually, especially why I'm talking out and about just in my regular life, because I should weigh everything I say, especially when it comes to words. I know you're going, uh, can you say anything other than words? Well, <laughs> yes, you can, but we're going to get farther. They have to make up words for it. But there is all, life or death comes out of the mouth. So our words are life or death, period. And that's part of the teaching about this living truly free that I'm going to be revealing. And I will end up talking about it on here as well as, as per talking to other people and interviewing other people and, and for you to have examples for to even the testify me, you know, and everything like that. So I'm excited for this time. I am not giving up. I am pushing through, pushing through, pushing through because God is great and he is greatly to be praised. And there is nothing, if you're breathing, then you're not done. If you know him at all and you're breathing, which means if you can watch this, you're breathing, you're not done. He has a plan for your life. Ask him what it is. And you know what the reality is? You probably already know. You've just been um, feared away from it or, uh, you know, condemned away from it or believe some lie to keep you from it. But if you are alive and you know Christ, actually, even if you haven't met him yet, you have a destiny. He speaks destiny over each one of us before he even places us in our mother's womb. That's why the sanctity of life is so important because that person inside the womb has a destiny and a purpose for God to change and, and um, magnify him, to change this earth and magnify him in every way possible on this earth. And the enemy knows it and he knows his time is short. So he wants to take as many of those lives as possible because he knows they're called to great things. That's why, I mean, it is already an abomination before the Lord to take any life but that's why even in this time, the enemy is working so hard to literally murder 
all of those children in the womb and just out of the womb because he knows there's a God-given destiny on them and he fears them. He fears them. So we who are living must and have to fight for them in every possible way we can. Even me speaking this out right now is fighting for them. So stand up, look to heaven, ask God what he has for you and ask him every way that you have been derailed and ask him to free you from that derailing in Jesus name. Invite Holy Spirit in to cleanse you. Invite the blood of Jesus upon you to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, to clear your mind, your eyes, your ears and give you a heart of flesh and not a heart of stone so you can go forward in all the great things of God. And then deep dive into scripture, Talk to him. Learn who he is in scripture. Don't be afraid. And then surround yourself with good um, Christian people who are striving to know him better, who are not legalistic, but who are passionate for Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, and God the Father. Blessings. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you later. Bye.